Assalamu alaikum. How are you, my dear students? Hope you will be fine and okay. Uh, last uh, lecture I started from unit number eight. That was the uh, uh, temperature and heat. Uh, and I skipped the exercise of unit number seven, properties of matter. And I uh, thought it wise that you will do it yourself. But some of the students ask for the guidelines, then uh, I intend to do it for you. So our today lecture is uh, the question answers and numerical solution of unit number seven properties of matter. So let us start with the name of Allah Almighty. Uh, let us see the open your, uh, your book at page 164 unit seven properties of matter here the first question is encircle the correct answer from the given choices the first part is in which of the following state molecules do not leave their position option a solid option b liquid option c gas and option d plasma so of course uh, it is solid if you remember the kmt there i told you that in solids molecules are fixed at their position and they only vibrate about their mean position uh, the second is which substance substances is the lightest one option a is copper option b is mercury and option c is aluminium and option D is lead. So if you uh, look into the list of the densities given for the objects in your book, so most probably I think it will be the aluminium which will be the lightest, right? Uh, and this is the uh, this is the aluminium, right? But you check it again also. Uh, and compare in the list. I just got uh, this book uh, uh, from a student, so I copied the exercise from it. So I, uh, they, he marked off some of the MCQs which I erased, right? Because I don't know whether he did it correct or not, but let us check it down the road. Number third. And the SI unit of pressure is Pascal, which is equal to, so of course, you know, that if you just see what is pressure force per unit area. So its unit is Newton per meter square, right? And which is equal to one Pascal. So of course, uh, one Pascal will be equal to Newton per meter square. The fourth one, what should be the approximate length of the glass tube to construct a water barometer? So if you remember, I told you that the water barometer, if we use a water barometer, it will be very much out of proportional because of its density smaller than the density of the uh, uh, mercury, it will need a very long tube. Right, so that was approximately 10 meter calculated. So 11 is very close to it. The fifth one, according to the Archimedes principle, up thrust is equal to option A, weight of the liquid displaced, volume of the displaced liquid, mass of the liquid, none of these. So uh, according to the I mean, these uh, principle, the up thrust that acts on an object will be equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. So definitely it is option A. The fifth one is the density of substance can be found with the help of Pascal law, Hooke's law, Archimedes principle and principle of flotation. So that is the Archimedes principle because the principle of flotation also works on the principle Archimedes principle. So that is the best option. Next, according to the Hooke law, option A, stress and the product of stress and strain constant, 
the ratio of stress to strain constant strain stress ratio is equal to constant stress is equal to strain so the correct option is option b the ratio of stress to strain always remain constant uh, now this is very important and more conceptual also the following force extension graph of the springs are drawn on the same scale answer the question given below from 8 to 9 which graph does not obey the hook law so of course the in the hook law we says that stress directly proportional to strain yeah that is uh, very simple that extension force directly proportional to extension so of course for the direct proportionality we have which of the graph for the direct proportionality we have the graph this one option b all right so the clear that is which graph sorry uh, sorry sorry very sorry they this is the uh, this is the question they which graph does not obey the whole graph so of course the one which has no uh, a linear relationship and that is option c this graph because you know it is a straight line parallel to the x-axis right the next one is the which graph gives the smallest value of the spring constant so you know that f is equal to what k into x this k is a spring constant and it equals f by x so this is the smallest spring constant so for the smallest spring constant we have the this factor the displacement very large for small force large displacement so here you see look it is exactly this uh, graph for the small force we have a very large displacement so definitely it is option D, which is correct. Which graph gives the largest value of spring constant? So the largest value of spring constant, large force and small extension. Large force and small extension. So it is which one? Large, that is the force is very large and the extension is very small. So, of course, it is this one, the option A here. Now, uh, let us move on to the exercise, uh, the numerical part. In the numerical part here, they say that a wooden block measuring 40 centimeter cross 600 centimeter cross 5 centimeter has mass 85 gram find the density of the wood so you just see look this is the length of the wood and definitely this will be the 40 centimeter and the width of the wood that will be 10 centimeter and the height here is of course this height is 5 centimeter so what is the density as you know, density is equal to what? Density is equal to mass per unit volume of an object. The mass is given to you. This is the mass of the object, right? And this is the entire, when you multiply, this is the volume. But remember here, the answer is what? The answer is in kilogram per meter cube. So your answer will come out to be there are two ways you can do either convert this into kilogram first so how it will look like so if you convert this into kilogram it will be definitely by 1000 so 8 8 5 kg and if you convert this into meter then what will happen 0.4 meter into 0.1 meter into 0 0.05 meter and your answer will be right here in kilogram per meter cube hope you will finish the calculation by using your calculator right this is very easy as easy as eating ice cream the next one is 
how much would be the volume of the ice formed by freezing one liter of water? This is a very technical question because you are dealing with two things. And what are those two things? One, you are dealing with what? With the ice, right? And then you have been given what? The water. So you know that ice is the solid form of what? Water. And they both have a density differences. Here you see, look, when you place the ice cube uh, and when you drop the ice cube in water, you know that the ice cube are what? They are floating right that it means that the density of the ice density of ice is smaller than the density of what smaller than the density of water so what is this technical problem another one that volume is given in what it is given in liter so one liter of water is always equal to one kilogram so they ask you about the uh, how much would be the volume of the ice form so as by as we know that as we know density is equal to what density uh, is uh, let me use a d for this one your density is equal to what mass per unit volume so what will be your volume volume will be equal to what mass by density now the mass of the water one kilogram of water it is equal to what it is one volume of the that is one liter volume of the water always equal to one kilogram of water right so the mass is one kilogram with you and the density of the ice which is which you will see uh, in the list. Unfortunately, I do not remember by heart, but it is most probably, I think, uh, that uh, 999 or like that, I'm, uh, 920, I think, 920, uh, 920 um, uh, kilogram per meter cube. I'm not sure about it but i think so that it is like that okay so when you divide the uh, the mass one kilogram by 920 you will get the answer in the meter cube and then later on change into what into liters so you do it solve it yourself and then consult me okay so here is this is what this is the density not of water but of what density of ice that is d and here it is just we call it rho for example so here it is the density of ice density of ice right the next question is uh, they are telling you they calculate the volume of the following objects in iron sphere of mass 5 kilogram and the density of the iron sphere is uh, 8200 kilogram per meter cube. So this is as is, is, is eating ice cream lock. What is density? And density is equal to mass per unit volume. So what will be the volume? Mass by density. And it is uh, you, uh, pretty much easier because all the units, if you apply the unit consistency checking, so all the units are in the MKS. So there is no uh, uh, rocket science in it, very easy. Second is the 200 gram of the lead shot having a density of 11,300 kilogram per meter cube. So here, if you just see, look, these are the lead shots where this is the iron sphere. Here, you see that the problem is which one? It is this one. Here, the mass is given in what? Again, we will be using the same formula. Same formula for this also, and you will do it yourself. But here, what is the problem? Mass here is given in gram. And for the MKS system, it will be 0.2 kilogram. And the density is already in what? The density is already in the MKS. So just divide this by this and you will get the right answer.
the third one is the a gold bar of mass 0.2 kg the density of the gold is this and again this is also very easy and use the the do it yourself use the same formula is above in this question the next one is the density of the air is 1.3 kilogram per meter cube per meter cube find the mass of the air in a room measuring 8 meter 5 meter and 4 meter so you know that for the solution what is the density of the air 1.3 kilogram per meter cube and you know that the volume of the room is 8 meter cross 5 meter cross 4 meter one round about 160 meter cube i think you just multiply whether it is and what is density mass per unit volume so of course mass equals density into volume so very easy and you will get the answer in kilogram finish the calculation yourself uh, next one is a student presses her palm by her thumb with a force of uh, 75 newton so here the force is what here the force is the force is 75 newton The force is what? Force is 75 Newton, right? And how much would be the pressure under her thumb having contact area 1.5 centimeter square? So area is 1.5 centimeter square. And you know what is pressure? Pressure is equal to force per unit area. So you have the force that is 75 Newton but you need to apply the unit consistency checking because you know that here let me do it for you that you know one centimeter is equal 10 raised to the power minus two meter so one centimeter square will be equal 10 raised to the power minus two meter whole square or 10 raised to the power minus four meter square so definitely you need the unit consistency checking minus 4 meters square so this will be 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters square and the answer will be in newton per meter square clear so you need to do this also the next one is the head of a pen is a square of side 10 millimeter find the pressure on it due to the force of 20 newton so again here what is pressure force per unit area the force is given that is 20 newton but the area is a problem here and now you know that it is a cube this is that it is what it is a cube of what uh, so is a square of side 10 millimeter so this is 10 mm this is 10 mm and this is what 10 mm so we are only interested in what we are only interested in the base area because the pressure is exerted there or this one okay so that what will be the area for the area area will be equal to what it will be equal to 10 millimeter cross 10 millimeter and this will be 20 millimeter square but you know that the unit consistency checking is important right and here you know that look what will be once here one millimeter equals 10 to the power minus three meter okay so one millimeter square will be equal to what take the square of this and it will be 10 to the power minus six meters square so that is the only trick here so you have the force 20 newton and you have two or you have this is 10 raised to the power minus 6 meters square 
right so the answer will be of course even if you just see look what will happen this is 2 into 10 to the power 1 and this is 10 to the power minus 6 so 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per meter square <laughs> you have won this thing. the second important point here is you just see a uniform rectangular block of wood of wood yeah of wood 20 centimeter 7.5 centimeter and 7.5 centimeter square and a mass of 1000 gram stains on a horizontal surface with its longest edge vertical so this is the longest edge and this longest edge is what the longest edge is vertical so the longest edge it is 20 centimeter right it is what it is vertical so for the pressure you know that what is pressure pressure is equal what uh, the pressure exerted huh? pressure is equal to force per unit area now we need only the base area this one this base area right this is needed here so here the length that is 7.7 .7 centimeter right this one 7.5 centimeter here or 7.5 centimeter here so the area is what here the area is 7.5 into 7.5 centimeter square and as i told you that you need to change it into what into the meter square so 7.5 square and one centimeter you know it is 10 to the power it is 10 to the power minus 4 meter square so this will be your area the uh, the i'm so sorry i'm so sorry pressure is equal to force per unit area so you see here that you have what that you have the uh, again i'm making the same thing pressure is equal to force per unit area so now where is the force definitely force is equal to the weight of the object right the weight is given 1000 this is what this is 1000 so it is equal 1 kg mass is equal to what 1 kg the mass is 1 kg 1 kg into 10 meter per second square so of course 10 newton the black haze what the rectangular black haze that weight is 10 newton the area is there and you apply for the pressure and that will be your answer in newton per meter square they ask for the volume what is the volume if this is the length this is the width and this is the height length and width the same so of course multiply all length width into height and you will get the volume so this is also very easy the next one is a cube of glass five centimeter side and mass 306 gram has cavity inside it you see we have the cube here you see look at the cube and this cube has what this cube has the cavity inside it and you see the cavity also this is the cavity so they are telling us that if the density of the glass is this find the volume of the cavity so what we will do first of all a cube of glass five centimeter side and mass three zero gram so first we will just simply mass of the glass that is volume volume of the glass cube volume of what volume of the glass cube with cavity with cavity when it has a cavity we will find this volume v1 and what is volume um, this there is a cube which has what which is five cubic centimeter side so it will be what five cubic centimeter side and definitely it will be one uh, it will be uh, 125 cubic centimeter right then you need to find out the 
volume of the glass cube without QED. Volume of the glass cube without QED. Without QED. And there is no QED. QED. Right? So what it will be? That volume will be V2. And you know that it will be equal to what? Mass, that is the, what is density? Density mass per unit volume. So what will be the volume? It will be mass divided by what? Divided by density. So you have been given the density and you have been given the mass, right? And that came out to be, what is the mass? The mass is 306 gram. And what is the density? The density, uh, what is the density uh, is, that is 2.5 gram per cubic centimeter. And I think when you divide, this will be 120 cubic centimeter. Check it yourself also. So what will be the volume of the QVT? The volume of the QVT will be, that is the volume of the glass cube V1 minus volume of the glass cube without QVT. That will be V2. And you will get this answer in cubic centimeter, right? So the next one is, that an object has 18 Newton weight in air. Its weight is found to be 11.4 Newton when a mass in water. Calculate the density. Can you guess the material? Oh, okay. So A is from the density formula for the object. You know the density of the object is equal to weight of the object in air into W1, weight of the object in air, into W2, weight of the object in what? In uh, weight of the object in water, right? Because you know it will lose weight in water. This is why you just see, look, before it was greater and now it is smaller. And this will be equal to what? The density of the water, right? When it must in water. So we all know these things you see it will be so the density will be what will be the weight in air it is 18 newton and the weight 18 newton and what is the weight this is 18 newton the weight w1 this weight w2 because uh, the after stop the water rates on it so it loses weight and it is 11.4 newton Right, so 11.4 Newton and the density of water is what? 1000 kilogram per meter cube. And when you simplify, you will get the answer in kilogram per meter cube and you just check the list that it is, uh, whether it is matching to one of that and find that which one is it. So that is this one. The next question is that a solid block of wood of density 0.6 gram per cubic centimeter weight 3.06 Newton in air. Determine the volume of the block. Now for the volume of the block and see the volume of the block immersed when placed freely in a liquid of density 0.9 gram per cubic centimeter. Right, so this is uh, also very easy. First of all, look here, you have been given what? A solid of wood of density. This is the density of the object, right? And its weight is given. This is the weight in what? This is the weight in air, right? <laughs> in air, determine the volume of the block. So first of all, you need to find mass of the block also what is the volume of the block you know solution for the volume of the block we have mass of the we first what is given the density of the block is given and it is 0.6 gram per cubic centimeter right and the weight of the block is given 
3.06 newton right and the density of the liquid is also given it is 0.9 gram per cubic centimeter what is required from us from us they ask which things first they ask they the uh, volume of the object a number volume of the object we want and b number number b the volume of the object and volume of the object when immersed in water volume in water right and these two things they ask so the first one let's see the first one is what solution a what is volume volume is equal to mass by density of the a mass by density of the object d now where the mass will comes from you know this is w is equal to what m into g so what will be the mass mass will be equal to w by g so you do it like that way now the next this will what you will get the volume of this object and it will come this way now when it is immersed in water you know it is wood a part of the object will what it will float there is it will float on the water and a part will sink and a part will stay above the surface of the water so they only want to find out this portion of the water uh, this volume of what this volume of the object so what will be this volume it will be equal to the weight of the liquid displaced it will be equal to what it will be equal to the weight of the liquid displaced right so we just want this thing but you already know as i just use the above formula for part b now you know that look before i use the density of the object formula w1 into w1 minus w2 into what into the density of the liquid right now we are interested in the volume of the water and it is somewhere here and what is this w1 minus w2 this w1 minus w2 it is in fact what this is the up thrust of the water acting on this object w1 minus w2 right and it is the up thrust sense up thrust and you know according to the archimedes principle this is equal to what rho vg so density of the object this will come out to be what the uh, that is uh, the uh, that it is immersed in a water so we will just simply find this relationship we will use this relationship put this value the density of the object you already know and this rho density of the liquid vg and it will come out to be the weight of the object in air so that weight will be equal to m into g right which is given to you here it is this w1 right weight in air so w1 is given to you and this will now come here into row so this row and this row will get cancelled and we will be equal to w1 by g and you can use this formula to find this uh, answer the next one is the they are telling to you that the diameter of the piston of the hydraulic press is 30 cm how much force is required to lift a car weighing 20000 newton on its piston if the diameter of the piston is 3 cm so this is actually what the effort piston effort piston so the diameter of the effort piston is given right and that is what I will be denoting it by a small d and that small d is 3 into 10 minus 3 power minus 2 meter right and then of course it is the diameter of the load piston d this one this is d and this one is what small d 
ever faster why this is for what this is the load faster the load piston load piston diameter and the load piston diameter d it is 30 centimeter r it is just 30 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter or you can simply say 0.3 meter here or 0 0.03 meter there okay so that is the diameter clear now the force the weight of the car f2 f2 is given and what is f2 this f2 is 20000 newton and they ask the effort applied that how much force f1 is it so a is from the pascal principle as we know that look in the pascal principle here the area this will be the bigger area and this will be pi r square so definitely pi d square by 4 area and here for this case small a and it will be pi by d square by 4 right so as we know that they lock pressure at the effort piston must equal pressure at the load piston so of course you know f1 by a and this is what f2 by a and they ask for f1 effort and it will be f2 into a by a so definitely what it will be f2 into what is this a a is pi d square so definitely d pi by 4 and pi by 4 will get cancelled and this will be this d and then there is a square on it also okay so this is for the quick reference that even if you want to find out f1 always bus use if diameter is given so always use if 2 d square uh, d by d whole square right if you want to find f2 it will be the reverse capital d uh, that uh, sorry for f2 for f2 it will be just the reverse d by d whole square it will look like this okay in term of the radius even pi r square so you will use smaller r and bigger and then the answer will look like here and that answer will be in newton and of course it will be less the next one is the last question a steel wire of cross-sectional area this is the cross-sectional area of the steel wire a is given this is a is stretched through two millimeter so this two millimeter is what it is delta l right the change in length by a force of what 400 newton this is force find the young modulus of the wire the length but remember this length it will be 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter find the young modulus of the wire the length of the wire so this is the original length of the wire l solution very simple is we know that from the young modulus it is equal to f into a and uh, and this will be f no f l into a delta l right why because young modulus is stress by strain so you know stress is force per unit area and it is change in length per unit length so length into change in length so that will be the young modulus so your young modulus will come out to be f l a delta l and what will be this one look what is the force 4000 newton right and this is 4000 newton and what is the l l is 2 meter and what is the area 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter square and the change in length is 2 millimeter so 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter and you will get the answer in newton per meter square so this is your today lecture uh, right and hope you will finish your calculation and will let me know so thank you very much